Uh, keep them coming. Let's have a look at some of these um, news items then that to point towards 2024. First thing I think to say about 2024, perhaps, is OMG 2024. That just does sound like something out of a science fiction novel, doesn't it? The year is 2024. <laughs> it's like, what? It's Yes, folks, it's 2024 next year. That just sounds like so much, <laughs> like not next year, but, you know, 40 years away from now. But it's here. 2024 is um, <laughs> barreling its way towards us. And what are your hopes for Portugal, for yourself, for your neighbourhood, for your community, for Portugal and for the year next year? Uh, this will be an ongoing conversation, of course, won't it, uh, until the new year comes. Then we have it again when 2025 um, is arriving. The Portuguese will be here a little bit later on with his unique take on this and other matters. So what you got? What are you thinking uh, for um, 2024? Uh, do let me know. I'm going to go to, uh, let's have a look at uh, the uh, news and information area of our own website here, at goodmorningportugal.com. And we have a section. Uh, for those of you who prefer to hear it or watch it, there are podcast links and video there. And a lot of um, the headlines are all there, the things that I see during the day and post up here. I've got quite the collection now. And uh, you click it on, on something you want to read and it will take you to that particular item. And you can hear, what's this, wine drinking in the morning? Can you hear this? A morning yeah. greetings from a sunny Mino. A happy Monday and a great week. You see, and you can have it on in the in the background. It's not the whole shows. It's just selections and, and edits from the shows. Interesting little bits and pieces there. And I've got a couple of things. I, I do want to have a look at the Portugal resident and Portugal news before the Portuguese gets here. Because um, there was actually some really interesting and nice things over there uh, on, on the headlines, on the front pages. Which, you know, if it leads, it bleeds. Of course, anyone in the media will be thinking or be conditioned in that way. But there are some other nice things that, that we might have time to share. Something that caught my eye yesterday is what is Portugal's economic forecast for 2024? One of the um, items that's over here. Just the first bit, and then you'll click through to portugalbusinessnews.com. Portuguese economy news. Portugal's economic forecast for 2024 is extremely positive, uh, it says over here. Oh, yeah, you are seeing that on your screen right there. Uh, let me go back to it now, if I may. Yes, the um, the economic forecast for 2024 is extremely positive since the country's rating has just been upgraded by, or to an A, by three major ratings agencies, name, namely Moody's, Fitch and DBRS. Yes, you know them. Uh, we've heard of Moody's, haven't we? Uh, Portugal's economy is growing at an unprecedented uh, level levels and has just jumped two levels, according to Moody's new rating assessment. Portugal is now rated A3 with a stable outlook by Moody's. That is its best record since 2011. Moody's forecasts that the Portuguese economy will grow at an average rate of 2% over the next five years. Uh, for those of you who understand what that might actually mean. Um, for the rest of us, I, just, I'm, I think we're just thinking, well, that sounds like a good trend. Fingers crossed. Um, Portugal's impeccable credit rating will make it possible for the country to have access to lower interest rates and to a larger number of international investors. This is supported by Moody's assessment of the Portuguese economy that highlights the positive medium-term effects of a series of economic and budgetary reforms. Let me just copy that link there, and I'll put it in the chat for you so you can read more if you want to. Uh, that highlights the positive medium-term effects of a series of economic and budgetary reforms, the deleveraging of the private sector, and the continued strengthening of the banking sector. Deleveraging. That is totally made up, isn't it? We'll come to, is it a good time to buy a property in Portugal in 2024 in just a moment? But let me put the link um, through to uh, the chat there for you if you want the, the, that business news. Rugby Collar is commenting. Good to see you. Looking forward to seeing you at the weekend. Uh, you could broadcast the video. It is an alternative Christmas song about Guinness, but it is two and a half minutes of rude, of rude, of rudeness. <laughs> I think there's going to be more of that on Saturday, Colin. Oh, no, it's not rude. Okay. I think I might, I might vet it first. And uh, certainly I will pass that on to uh, Bobby for you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what's this? Ooh, I know you, naughty boy. <laughs> what is that for? Okay, um, let's go back to this uh, news then here uh, of uh, this week. I, I break the news there down into um, uh, sections, uh, we weekly sections of news. And uh, here now we're having a look at, is it a good time to buy a property in Portugal in 2024? I hope you had a great day, incidentally, yesterday, Colin. It was the actual birthday yesterday, wasn't it? 
and uh, the celebrations continue into the weekend. So I hope you had an excellent day yesterday. Investropa, which is quite a clumsy name, is it not? I'm guessing, is that Europa and Invest coming together to, to bring you Investropa? Are you considering buying real estate in the land of port wine? I wonder if anyone just starts with that. Do you know what? I think I like port wine. I think I'll buy a house there. Are you wondering if the prices are adequately positioned? If that's check and check for you, let's read on. People have different thoughts about market timing. Yes. Just like e economists, right? Um, isn't that a really unaccountable profession? Your Portuguese friend might tell you that now is the ideal time to buy property, whereas your colleagues in Lisbon may think that prices will soon decline. At Investropa, when we create articles or update our pack of documents related to the real estate market in Portugal, we base our work on verifiable facts and concrete data. I, 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 I do like saying data as data. I, naturally, I would say data, but concrete data sounds great. Sounds like uh, the name of a rapper, possibly, uh, rather than subjective opinions. Yeah, whatever. OK, um, it's, aren't subjective opinions said firmly and with a, an infographic like the one you're seeing on the right here? Aren't they? Don't, is that what promotes it into a verifiable fact? Um, not not aimed at you necessarily, Investropa, but, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter it, it, so much, does it? I mean, have a look, see for yourself. Um, and we are going into some, some long grass here when we consider that um, we've got these prices to rent and projected GDPs and stuff like that. Um, the population at 10.3 million with a GDP per capita of 33,700 begins to lose me. And I suspect some of you as well. But if that's your thing, the link is going into the chat uh, right now to learn more about that. And I'll give you gen more generally the uh, link to find our uh, Portugal News and Info that is updated pretty much on a daily basis. That'll be goodmorningportugal.com with a forward slash PT uh, hyphen news hyphen info, I believe, uh, popping that into the chat right now for you. So there you go. And yeah, you can watch uh, and listen and read at Portugal News and Info with its own little YouTube channel at the moment uh, because um, it's the clips. The Good Morning Portugal is all about the uh, 90 minutes that uh, we treasure and share together in the morning. But that's quite a big commitment. If you just want to dip in and find out what's going on in Portugal uh, through my lens, it has to be said, things that uh, appeal to me. You can do so on the link that I've just put into the chat uh, right there. This one here. OK, um, where are we? Um, we are with uh, Owen saying the best chance to see the Jim, Jimmy Mid meteor shower. Hoping for clear skies tonight, up to 120 meteors per hour. I've had more than my fair share of, of um, meteor action and shooting stars and stuff as I walk the dogs down the, the back lane. Um, it's beautiful. It's really arresting, even quite near a town as we are. The night sky is pretty dark, and I'm seeing some wonderful, arresting, beguiling scenes in the sky, Owen. Thanks for that prompt. And yes, uh, from Pete too. It's meant to be clear for the next week here, so it might be a bit chilly, but a great chance to see the night sky. All right, let's um, take that off the screen and uh, go to the homepage of the Portugal News, where there's a few uh, things that uh, were of interest to me, and I hope to you this morning. And the Portuguese joins us at uh, 9.30. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking to Siobhan. Uh, you know her from uh, Quinta uh, Salia, Quinta do Salia, uh, uh, a Quinta, it's called, isn't it? Uh, the uh, wonderful farm outdoor experience centre on the other side of the bay from us here. We've recorded a few videos and she used to pop onto the show. She'll be back tomorrow morning. She is just uh, uh, putting together a print on demand business. I think she's been in it for a while, but she, she, she's launching it and we're going into a bit of a partnership. So the mugs, uh, we're going to be doing the mugs here in Portugal, just down the road. Isn't that great? Uh, and we'll bring some of that merch to some of the events that we do, our Discover Portugal weekends. And I think it's going to be make them a lot more affordable um, so that we can um, get them in the Portuguese post and we can keep it local. And she's going to do some T-shirts. I'm really looking forward to doing some Portuguese and some Good Morning Portugal T-shirts as well. So let's have a chat with um, Siobhan in the morning. We're talking to Sarah as well. Coach Turner is due for a visit tomorrow too. He can update us on the latest schedule itinerary for his road trip next year. And um, we should have some Feel Good Friday fun tomorrow. And if you've got any ideas for mugs or merch, what would you like? Um, to see maybe a Good Morning Portugal bit of merch or something else, you know, some sort of um, Portuguese iconography or a, a, what the phrases that we use here, some of the memes we've made. Would you like to see that on a mug or a T-shirt? Do let me know and we'll chat with Siobhan about that tomorrow morning. OK, let's go to 
the Portugal news now. And what was it that caught my eye earlier on? Get off, pop up. Um, the NFL is coming to Iberia. That will be of interest, won't it, to uh, NFL football fans. This one, snow forecast in Portugal as temperatures plummet. So we might have a white Christmas uh, here in Portugal. How about that? Let's have a little read of this then. Cold and dry weather will return to the mainland on Wednesday. Uh, that, this was published yesterday. With minimum temperatures expected to fall between 5 and 8 degrees Celsius. It's currently 12 outside uh, my back door and between three and six at maximum, according to meteorologist Bruno Café. What a great name. The meteorologist from the Portuguese Institute of the Sea and Atmosphere, IPMA, told Luza that the weather will change on Wednesday after days of above average temperatures. It's going to get a bit chilly due to an anti-cyclone located. Yeah, my electricity bill has doubled <laughs> in this last month um, due to an anti-cyclone located north of the Iberian Peninsula. Can we not move it? Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, this was reported yesterday, we will have a more widespread decline with temperatures dropping. The minimum will go to between five and eight, maximum between three and six. We will feel an increase in thermal discomfort. <laughs> We're looking for a new name for poo sticks this morning. And there's another phrase for being cold. An increase in thermal discomfort due to the increase in wind intensity. Oh, um, yeah, that's when you don't want to be using that love toilet when you have an increase in wind intensity, right? Well, you find out if you're re really loved or not, I guess. According to the meteorologist, there is also the possibility of snowfall above 1,200 metres and 1,400 metres on Wednesday. So if it was going to happen, is that are we talking about next Wednesday or yesterday? It was published yesterday. So um, I don't know. Keep an eye out for that. The Serra de Estrela, you, you, the funny thing about the Serra de Estrela and snow in Portugal is you can... You can technically go and see on the Serra de Estrela mountain range, the highest point in Portugal, of course. But the problem is the road to it gets closed when it snows. <laughs> so it could be tricky. <laughs> um, Carl uh, from uh, Orico. Good morning, Doug. Doug's in as well. Good morning, Doug. Uh, this is a, a great comment from Orico. There's been reference to the celebrations of the 50th, 50th anniversary of the April 25th revolution next year. Have you seen the film I sent you inspired by what happened on that date? No, not yet, but I will. I suspect subconsciously I was saving that as I gird my loins and get to my, the GMP machinery into shape. I can't wait to see that, Oriko. Thank you for that prompt and reminder. I think it'd be interesting for everyone here. I'll make sure it's um, it goes onto our website. Um, it's a good approximation of what happened that day and the respective situation. A brilliant primer for the year ahead. Thanks, Oriko, for that. And 12 degrees, that's weird because it's 12 degrees here currently. Yes, it is. So, but I'm um, guessing... Oh, I felt suddenly a, a, a surge of competitiveness with you, Doug. I don't think you've got a blue sky like I've got here. Hmm. <laughs> okay. But I hope you're nice and warm over there in Wales. And thank you. And you had some lovely feedback for your uh, Advent video. Thanks for sending that, Doug. With um, Silent Night in sung by you in Welsh. And you do have a very high register. Very beautiful. You've got an incredible vocal range, Doug. I'm meant to ask, uh, how's your recovery? Are you back to 100%, Dougie? That's to you from Joao de Nort this morning. Okay, so possible snow then here in Portugal. Let's go back to the Portugal news and to the front page. Oh, something's just been published as we speak. Housing tax break for young people. Uh, Mayor of Lisbon, Carlos Moedas of the PSD, um, has questioned PS and CDU about the IMT exemption for young people. So housing tax break for the young there. It's not something that's paid though, is it? By is that for when you is that when you're buying or when you're when you're on your ongoing cost? Because you, if you're a renter, you don't pay that. So one of the interesting things about Portugal is the owner that pays the tax, uh, the council tax, not uh, the person who lives in the property if they're renting. Uh, Braga has been recognised as a sustainable destination. Well, that's a relief. Uh, more of that destinations. Um, strong investment in assisted living in Portugal. We had a Portugal club recording about ageing in Portugal, which uh, just a reminder to you Portugal club members and those of you who are asking for that. Um, had a very excellent uh, chat about that, about the culture here of what happens when you get older and how you get cared for. So assisted living, investment in that here in Portugal. I mean, it's going to be a trend that, isn't it? Especially whilst the retirement age to hits. It changed last week. It changed again this week. Portugal retirement age to hit 68. And look up the meteor shower tonight. Uh, so let me um, just go to that. Thanks for the prompt from Owen, of course, on that. Tonight, between the 13th and 14th of December, 
the uh, Geminid meteor shower will reach its peak and you'll be able to see up to 120 meteors passing per hour, as Owen suggested. Um, these Geminids usually occur every year and originate from the asteroid 3200. Fight on! And are one of the few meteor showers not to originate from a comet. This phenomenon began on November the 19th and will only end in December on the 24th on Christmas Eve. But you have the best chance of admiring it. Um, if you want the best chance, then look up tonight. That was yesterday, I believe. But uh, I think tonight it applies as well. As with all meteor showers, all you need is a clear sky, darkness, a little patience, and perhaps some blankets. And a big wondrous attitude, right? Um, and if you don't have one, you will when you see all those meteors flying about. You won't need to look in any particular direction. Meteors can usually be seen across the entire sky, according to NASA. Thank you, NASA, for that. So don't forget to pop out maybe tonight and have a look at the meteors that are happening. What else is happening on the Portugal news front page? As, a, as we anticipate the arrival of the Portuguese, North Americans rushing to Portugal. What's that about? Uh, the end of the tax exemptions for non-habitual residents, the NHR. What? What's that then? Um, in Portugal, has led to a rush of North Americans applying for residency tax in the country. It's a good photo, isn't it? Good stock photo. According to a report by Bloomberg, Portugal attracted a flood of expats in the pandemic. Yes, those were that was a particular time, wasn't it? People here uh, from that period of migration history into Portugal. The D7 and the pandemic are oh, different times. Uh, thanks to cheaper property prices, a warm climate and beneficial tax and visa programs. But political pressure tied to rising house housing prices has fueled a recent crackdown on perks for foreigners. And yeah, wrong target, government. And the lo looming elimination of the tax breaks has many scrambling to file paperwork to make sure they qualify for the program, which can save people hundreds of thousands of euros over what, 10 years. Well, yeah, only if you've got hundreds of thousands of euros in the first place, of course. You don't, you know, you don't generate that. It's a saving rather than um, an interest, if you like. Uh, one interesting comment. Um, so, says Natalie Gray, it's been ages since I've read a somewhat angry comment in the Portugal news. So, it's only North Americans rushing to get the NHR. The British, South African, Dutch and other communities aren't doing the same. I find that your articles always seem to mention North Americans many times in a negative light. You're biased. But that's not a surprise when I see you're owned by a British company. Ha! And there are far more British here than Americans. Seems to be a matter of deflection. Um, on that controversial note, uh, who better to bring onto the screen than the Portuguese? Ah, naughty, naughty, very, very naughty. Here he is. Those bloody Americans. Did I just say that? Was that the first thing I said? Yes, you're live on here. Good morning. I'm oh, sorry about that. I like Americans. <laughs> you say I really that do. now. Oh, no, no, I really, I really do. But they, they always get a bad, um, they always get bad press. Yeah, wherever true. they go, wherever they go, it's true. Just as we saw there, Natalie's not happy about that, is she? Yeah, yeah. I do like a Portugal news. I prefer I prefer the comments to the news over there. 